Less than half a century ago, learned men from many nations came to a quiet suburban street to visit an institute founded by the great Indian scientist, Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose. Inside, unique machines monitor the delicate living responses of plants in a section of the institute dedicated to the works of its founder. These are special instruments that Bose invented for making studies of the minute movements in plants. During the last years of his life, he was fascinated by the mysteries of plant life. We are fortunate that besides all that he wrote, in his later life, he made many recordings in his own voice in this machine. Travelling to England, Bose presented his latest and most significant discoveries in person before a gathering of the most distinguished minds in the scientific world, the 324 fellows of London's Royal Society. In the same hall where Darwin, Huxley and Faraday made history, the learned gathering listened with polite interest as the obscure Indian scientist described his pioneering measurements of radio waves. Through his experiments, Bose also discovered that both metals and living animal tissue respond in a similar way to the effects of radiation. He postulated, if the continuity exists between such extremes as metal and animal tissue, similar effects should be present in the plant kingdom. Touching the leaves of Mimosa pudica with a cotton soaked in ether, Bose demonstrates the fainting response in a plant. The object of his future experiments was to prove through the design and use of highly specialized machines that all the characteristic responses exhibited by animal tissue are also to be found in plants. The Bose experiments were denied publication by the Royal Society. By daring to suggest that electrical responses are present in plants, he had offended the learned members. It was in the actions of the plants that I perceived a prevailing unity that is within all things. The moat that quivers in ripples of light, the teeming life upon the earth, and the radiant suns that shine above us. I understood for the first time that ancient message proclaimed by my ancestors on the banks of the Ganges 30 centuries ago. They who see but one in all the teeming manifoldness of the universe, unto them alone belongs eternal truth, unto no one else. <laughs> 